Today we're going to learn how to name acids. You see here we have some different substances put in a solution and they're different colors. What they've actually done is use the same stuff we did, they put in red cabbage. So naming acids is important because we're going to use a lot of acids in the chemistry lab. So first of all, how do you name acids? Well, what you want to do is put acids in the categories and look at the formula. If the formula contains oxygen, that's going to be the one of the if the formula contains oxygen, that's going to be one of the first things we look at. So oxygen is going to be important in naming acids. So you want to look at the anion. The anion would be means it's negative. So if, for example, if you have a chlorine that's negative, that's called an anion because it's negative. So if you have HCl, you would know that does not contain oxygen. And so what happens is you're going to add a prefix to anything that doesn't contain oxygen. So the prefix will be hydro. And the suffix will be ic. So the way you would name that would be something like hydrochloric acid. Now, how do you name things that don't con that do contain oxygen? So, if they do contain oxygen, they're going to be two categories. Like you could have, for example, NO2 minus, which is called nitrite, or you could have NO3 minus, which is called nitrate. So, look at the, let's look at those two examples. So, nitrite. Well, the I becomes us, so we call it nitrous acid. N-I-T-R-O-U-S acid. If you have nitrate, NO3 minus is called nitrate, that would be called nitric acid. So that we see that down here. So let's do look at some more examples. This is a chart that shows us the three categories. Remember, the two at the bottom would be called what we call oxy acid. So if we want to split this into two groups, we can do that. The ones at the top I'm going to draw a line right through here. The ones at the top are not oxy acids, the one below R. So, for example, if you have HCl, which we see here, how do you name that? We know that its chloride is, a, is the ion, but it's going to be have the prefix hydro and the suffix ic. So it's hydrochloric acid. Now let's look at the oxy acids we have down here. Remember we said we had the I category? I would be any polyatomic ion that ends in ite. So what we do for those, instead of saying ite, we add, we change it to us. So if we have ClO2, that becomes HClO2, because we, so we call it chlorous acid. Notice there is no hydro here. So the oxy acids do not have the prefix hydro. And notice this one says hypo. Don't get that confused with hydro. Hypo is the name of the polyatomic ion. And so we change hypochlorite to hypochlorous acid. Okay, so that's the that's the ites. Now if we go up to the eights, like we've got perchlorate or chlorate, eights become ic. So we've got perchlorate becomes perchloric acid, and chlorate, which we have right here, we have chlorate becomes chloric acid. So eight becomes ic, ite becomes us. Now let's look at some more examples. So I put these three up because I thought these were three good examples. Remember we have two categories. We have things that are oxy acids, things that are not. So notice the, the first, I'm going to put a line there because the first one is not an oxy acid, the last two are. So what is the name the, of the anion or the negative part of that acid? So what we see is we have a chloride ion, a sulfite polyatomic ion, and a sulfate polyatomic ion. So hopefully you remember the difference between those, if you have one without oxygen, you're going to add a prefix hydro and a suffix ic. So the first one is going to be called hydrochloric acid. Now notice the last two are oxy acids, so there is no hydro included. So the ite on this one becomes us. So instead of sulfite, we say sulfurous acid. And they change the name, the spelling, just a little bit for pronunciation reasons. And the last one, remember, eight becomes ic. So that becomes sulfuric acid. So here I have all three of those written down. So we have hydrochloric acid. And so we see the uh, this one became, we've got the uh, suffix ic and the prefix hydro. And this is for our one category that's not an oxy acid. Then for our two oxy acids, notice there's no hydro, but our I became us. So we have sulfurous acid. And then our eight became ic, 
and so we had sulfuric acid. So every single acid is going to fall into one of these three categories. Let's look at some different examples. So here we have some different ones. Let's pick out the ones we haven't talked about. So here we see carbonate on this list. We know this is not a has is an oxy acid, so we need no prefix. So the eight becomes ic, and we call it carbonic acid. We talked about the nitrite and the nitrate, and we've done the sulfate and the sulfite. Let's look at the acetate down here. That's an eight. Remember, eight becomes ic. ic so acetate ion we call it acetic acid and this is a vinegar that we've been using so acetic acid is another name for vinegar so here's a list of some common ones here's let's look at another list here's li this list has pretty much the same thing but what they've done is they've shown the salt or the anion in a compound so let's look at something we haven't seen so we have this is a polyatomic ion called hypochlorite so what would be, be the acid that's met, made, with that, made with that? Basically, you change I to us, and so we call it hypochlorous acid. Next one. Uh, so if you have just chlorite, there's no hypo, so that would be chlorous acid. And then if you go down to chlorate, remember, eight becomes ic, so we have chloric acid. And then we have another polyatomic ion, which is perchlorate, so we call it perchloric acid. So the important thing to remember is if the polyatomic ion, ion ends, in, ends in ite, it becomes us. If it ends in eight, it becomes ic. Now notice down here we've got one more example. We'll look at sodium sulfide. So notice this is not an oxy acid, so we're going to include that prefix hydro. So we call it hydro sulfuric acid so hydro I'm sorry hydrosulfic sulfuric acid so that would be H2S um, and then we have some other examples notice we don't, don't call it sulfuric acid because sulfuric acid would be for the oxy acid but hydrosulfuric acid would be uh, would be reserved for the sulfur that does not contain oxygen. So hopefully you have some practice on these acids. Make sure you can name the rest of the ones on this list. And that will be it. I love chemistry. I love chemistry. I love, I love chemistry. I love chemistry.